Y'all already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life, and we're back. It is hump day. Let's get over this hump and get this week finished with. So what I'm about to tell you should come as no surprise. It should be common sense. But as we know, common sense is not all that common. Today I'm going to give you stories on when lending things out in prison or jail goes bad. Reasons you should not loan anything to body, to anybody. The possibilities of what could potentially happen when it's time to get your stuff back. I've seen a lot of guys put themselves in harm's way because they wanted to be the nice guy and loan something out. They wanted to make a couple extra dollars and rent something out. But now he's got it. How are you going to get it back? What if he don't want to give it back? What you going to do? People just don't learn. You ever find yourself in that situation, remember this. Your stuff is your stuff. His stuff is his stuff. Don't get the two confused and don't give him your stuff. Keep your shit where it belongs. Y'all know how to seen it. You know how to lived it. <laughs> so let's relive it. Real quick before we get started, man. Shout out to one of the truckers here in Virginia, Ground Pounder. I seen it on the back of his truck. He honked the other day going down the interstate. Seemed pretty hype. I meet a lot of people that know me, know my channel, know of me. So, uh, you know, shout out to all the fans, man, all the, all the viewers, all the people I've run into. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all something that you probably don't process if you ain't been locked up. Not everybody in there is tough. You can be a goofy guy, just a class clown, 19 years old, loves to joke around, eats dinner with his mom and his father at the table every day. You can go out here and break the law, and they're going to send your ass to prison. You can be the biggest savage that ever walked the street, and you're gonna go to prison. Now you and these two guys, you might be one of the two, y'all gonna end up in the cell together. You may have never been in a physical altercation in your life, and they're gonna send you to prison. They do not let you go home because you've never been in a fight. Once you break the law and you get sentenced, that is it. You don't get to stand up and tell the judge, Hey, man, I'm not built for this. I was just joking. I was playing. Ha <laughs> ha, big playing. It's, it's over with, man. I'm going to just go home now. Don't work like that. You're going to prison. And being in prison, you're going to meet grown men that are not grown men. I've met guys that were in their 60s that just did not know when to stop playing. Joked all day. Then I've met guys that were 18, 19 years old that just had an old soul. Just had an aura about them that they carried and conducted themselves better than a 60-year-old man. We get a white dude in prison named Charles. Charles is as square as they come. You can look at Charles and tell the only time you've ever done is the time in jail that led up to you being here. You have never been incarcerated in your life. And he had. Charles' homeboys, some of them were thugged out. Charles was like the Malibu's most wanted out here in Richmond. He rocked with a whole bunch of dudes that thought they went hard. They told their little guns, sold their little cocaine. But Charles had never busted his gun, never been in a fight, never been in no real beefs or altercations. Gets caught with the gun, gets caught with the drugs. Bye bye, Charles. You're going to prison with the big boys. I was real big on who I would and who I wouldn't associate with. I don't know if you're going to say, oh, that's shitty. You should give everybody a chance. That's not the world I lived in. In the world I lived in, the people you hung around directly reflected who you were. And with the white guys, don't get mad at me, white guys. If y'all been locked up, y'all know what it is. A large majority of them were soft. A large majority of them were drug addicts on the streets. Posers on the streets. Thieves on the streets. They weren't killers. They were used to getting slapped up down in the projects over two eggs of dope. And that was the most physical interaction they'd have. Or get drunk out their mind and put their hands on a girl or something. But when you drop them in that environment... You see who they really are. Damn, dude's just a dope fiend. Like, how do you end up here? Man, these dudes gonna eat this dude alive. 
with Charles coming in, you see who people gravitate towards, what type of people he hangs out with, and that's going to tell you a lot about who he is. I didn't want no parts of Charles as soon as he came in. I could peep his, his demeanor when he came in with his bag, how he just looked scared. He looked like a chihuahua that had been dropped in a in a pool full of gators. Just looked scared to death, man. Like you could tell that dude didn't know up from down, left from right, right, which way to go. They give him his bed assignment, meaning the cell he sleeps in. He goes up there, meets his new cellmate. Hey, how you doing? I'm your cellmate. I kill people. Hey, how you doing? I'm Charles. I'm a B Rad Malibu's most wanted. I'm a fake gangster in the streets, and now I'm in prison pretty much what it was he gets to kicking it with these other little white dudes but none of these dudes are the violent type the fighting type i'd seen a couple of them get extorted a couple of them get slapped around here and there and disrespected and do nothing so now that charles is all shacked up with these dudes bffs and hanging out with them anybody who's anybody anybody that's into extorting or getting violent looks over and sees Shit, we got a new victim in the house. Well, Charles tried to play cool with dudes. And dudes are going to try you on the... Hey, what's up, man? What's your name? Oh, you Charles? Hey, yo, I'm such and such. Look, if you need anything, holla at me. He's not going to ever give you anything. That's his way of introducing himself to you so he can get what you got. I watched the wolves come out. Charles goes to commissary, comes back with his big-ass bag of commissary. Dudes would trickle by a cell. Hey, man, you got a shot of coffee I can get? They got coffee in the cell. They're trying to get Charles. Charles, yeah, man. Put a spoon in the bag, give them a shot of coffee. Instant coffee, just add hot water and stir. <clears throat> hey, man, I messed up in the game, bro. I smell you, you eating good up in here. Let me get a couple soups from you. Can I hold two soups? Yeah, I got you. None of these dudes aren't, not no, can I borrow two soups? I'll pay you back next week. Let me hold two soups. Meaning, when you go to ask for it, they can be like, well, gave those to me, man. I'm not, you know what I mean? I can't pay them back. If I had them, I wouldn't be asking you for them. Dudes are using Charles up. Charles would be out there making something to eat with his little flunky homeboys, and dudes would literally go up to the table and be like, damn, you eat good, bro. Hey, put the hand out with a napkin. Hey, break me off some, some my, put some in my napkin. Now it's like three, four different dudes that are, if they wanted, they could just take it off of Charles, but they're just feeling the waters as you may, right? When you order something in prison, they don't give you basketball sneakers. They don't give you sweatpants. These are all luxury items. You are gonna get a pair of state boots, three pair of blue jeans, three blue shirts, three white pair of socks, three white boxes, and three t-shirts. There's your wardrobe. We go to rec, we go to lift weights. If you ain't got no sweatpants, you gonna sweat. You ain't got no shorts, you gonna sweat. Charles had the money to be able to go to this place called personal property. It's almost like, remember back in the day, if you ordered something, you had to, you had, like, you fill out a slip, and then you put it in this box. The officers would come around once a week, take all the slips out the box. If you've got money on your books, this gets processed, sent off. The company that distributes stuff to us will mail it in. Once every few months, you get called over there. Hey, Williams, you got property. I go over to property. Okay, cool. My shoes showed up. My sweatpants showed up. All right, my wife beater showed up. A couple CDs I ordered showed up. Awesome. You order TV, you go to property. CD player, you go to property. Anything the state don't give you, you go to property. Except commissary, you go to commissary. Charles orders all these clothes. Charles got three pair of Levi's. Fresh white tees, fresh wife beaters, fresh sweatpants, and these New Balances. They sold Nike and these New Balance all white on our commissary at the time. Charles comes back, Charles stunting. He thinks he's shining, right? Walking around with these fresh gray sweatpants on and his wife Peter with his little frail body looking like a praying mantis in a t-shirt. And he got these fresh ass crispy white New Balances on his feet. I knew it was a matter of time for a dude who really, really, really got at him and just disrespected him. It was just coming. You're not gonna do it immediately because once you just take something completely from him, you've cut your means of walking out there and just, hey, let me get some food, let me get a shot of coffee, let me get two soups. That's now dead, you have to take it by force, and then that's the, that's the last you can get out of it. It's always one dude that messes it up for everybody. Charles wears maybe size eight, size nine in sneakers, walking around in his fresh white shoes, 
Now we got a tall dude, tall black dude in the pod, always playing basketball. This dude ain't got no sneakers. The couple times I did see him wear sneakers, he would have the most balled up sneakers, sneakers that the front of the sneakers would be coming apart. The heel would be coming off. He'd be getting guys to bring him back glue and he'd be gluing them back together. Now he's done borrowed Charles' sneakers and Charles should have never gave this man them damn sneakers, man. What he was thinking when he gave this man his sneakers, I don't know. What he was thinking is, hey, we're cool. You know what I mean? That's my homeboy. Charles, yeah, man, you can wear them. Just try not to scuff them up too much. I'm just going to play a little basketball in them. I ain't going to be too hard on them. I got you. I got you. Hey, man, good looking. I'm going to throw you something on store day for letting me borrow the sneakers. Thanks, man. Dude goes in the cell, sits down on his bunk, and puts Charles' little ass sneakers on his feet. Dude's feet were way too big for these sneakers. I mean, I guarantee you when he took them shoes off, his damn toes looked like an eagle claw, like his toes were curled up inside them damn sneakers. He had to fold his foot in half to put them inside and break all his toes. There's no possible way that man could wear them little ass sneakers without messing his toes all up, right? Comes in for basketball, wreck is over, wreck being when we go to the yard, sneakers got scuffs all over them. He done worn the soles in, not worn them out, just broke them in. They got that little part on the heel now that's starting to lean. He goes his cell, takes sneakers off, puts them on his bunk, grabs his shower stuff, heads to the shower. Comes out the shower, goes in his cell, gets dressed, stand by for chow. We getting ready to go eat dinner. Comes out the cell, he's got the sneakers on. I see Charles standing over there talking to his little homeboys, uh -huh, laughing and junk. At, at first, he's not making a big deal about it. I guess he's thinking, yeah, he'll bring me my sneakers on a little bit. Looking, Charles is like cutting eyes over there. Dude's over there, Char, kicking it out, laughing with his homeboys. He got the sneakers on. We come back from Chow. We lock down for count. We come out for count. We got night rack now. Dude goes outside. He's got the sneakers on. He's walking this dusty ass track. And I mean dusty. Like it's a dust bowl. It's straight. When the wind blows, you got to cover your eyes because the dust on the outside of this track will blow in your eyes. He's just walking, getting the sneakers all dusty, right? That night, Everything settled down. We done did our last count for the night before we lock in. Charles goes, dude was like, hey man, how the sneakers was? Oh, they 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 straight, they straight. Dude still got the sneakers on. Oh, that's what's up, man. You think I can get I can grab them jumps back from you? I like to take them and clean them up. Oh yeah, I got you, I got you. I'm wearing them right now. I'll give them to you in the morning. That's why you don't lend people shit. Charles, okay, okay, thanks, man. I'll see you. I'll, I'll come by and holler at you in the morning after breakfast. All right, do that, man. Do that. Morning time rolls around, dude goes to breakfast, he's got the sneakers on. Charles standing in line, I think by now it's starting to dawn on him, like, damn, I shouldn't have loaned this dude my sneakers, right? He's kind of just standing there waiting for his tray. It's early, early in the morning, ain't a whole lot of big activity going on. Ever Some of these guys just rolled out of bed, ain't wiped the shitty crust out the corner of the eyes, ain't brushed their teeth. You just got dudes standing in the child hall line, just waiting. Some of them half asleep, still got bed head. And Charles is just standing there looking like one of those dudes that ain't brushed his teeth, got bed head, right? Wearing his state boots. Now he's back to wearing them hard ass boots. And Charles, you know, the dude is up there wearing Charles sneakers. Come back from breakfast, Charles goes over there, Charles, and the dude tells him, hey, look, we're going to play some basketball this morning. It's, I'm going to wear these jumps outside and play basketball, all right? Charles, all right, all right man, I'll grab them back from you. Y'all know what happens. The dude just keeps dragging Charles. This dude ain't took these damn shoes off since he put the shoes on, which blows my mind because I know his dogs were barking. I know his feet were killing him in them little ass shoes. But he just continued to rock them. I got me some fresh new balances on. Thank you, Charles. Gets to a point where Charles is Selly is the one that says something. Selly tells him, look, man, you going to be in a cell with me? And this is a, pretty much a penitentiary rule. You can't be soft, you can't be no bitch. You gonna have to go get your stuff back. You live in here with me, you reflect us, man. You reflect this cell. And dudes ain't gonna be thinking they can come over this cell and just take stuff from you, because then I'm gonna get involved and you can get me in trouble. You need to get your shoes back. Charles goes over there and does his best to like, all right, man, look, I know you've been rocking them Jones and you gonna play basketball in them in two weeks now and them shit's starting to look like they about to fall apart. The fronts look like they about to pop open like open toe sandals because your toes is in there with your eager talents just trying to get out. I need my shoes back, man. Like, people starting to say stuff to me saying you trying to keep my shoes and shit. And, like, you ain't trying to keep my shoes, are you? Like, I need my shoes back. Dude tells him two words, two famous penitentiary words. That's dead. That's dead means 
Ain't nothing happening. You're not getting it back. End the discussion. Don't say nothing else about it. Dead deal. It's over. Dude tells him, it's dead. Charles, what you mean it's dead? Bro, I said it's dead. Don't say nothing else about the shoes. Dude mopes his way back over to his cell. Selly, where your shoes at? Man, I hollered at the man. What'd he say? Told me that's dead. What'd you say? I you know, kind of asked him what he meant. Bro, you need to go get your fucking shoes back or you can't be in a cell with me. It's that simple. Like, if you're going to be a pussy, you're going to be a bitch, you're going to find somewhere else to sleep. I told your dumb ass in the beginning not to be loaning stuff to people. You don't get these dudes nothing in here. Ain't nobody in here for being a boy scout. Look around you. All these dudes is crooks, criminals, and some way or another, and out to get the next man 24 hours a day. Why would you loan your shit out, dummy? Now you got to get your shit back, or you got to get out of my cell, right? Dude, gas is Charles up. Charles is the definition of Malibu's most wanted. Charles is, you've seen the way he talked when he first came in with the yo, 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 and what up, shouty, and all this. You've seen that slowly transform over the weeks. Because he's around dudes that are really street dudes that are clowning. He's talking about some shawty you talking to, man. You sound like a goofball right now. Fuck out of my face. So all his little street lingo, he be all right, then. Has done went out the window. Dude gasses Charles up and he said, look, man. If you go over there and tell a dude straight up, like, look, you got to give me my shoes back or we going to rumble. That's what it is. Like, don't be scared. One or two things going to happen. Man, y'all get into a fight and you'll get your shoes back. Charles like, man, I ain't, you know, I ain't never been to fight before. I ain't never been in no fights with nobody. He's like, well, sh you first came in, you was walking around like you was a little thug or something. Charles tells him, I don't be doing that fighting, man. You know what I mean? On the streets, we had guns and stuff. Man, you ain't shooting nobody on the streets. So, you know what I mean? What's the matter if you got a gun now? You wouldn't have shot it when you had it. You need to go tell that man y'all going to fight or he's going to get your shoes back. I told you, once you tell somebody it's dead, if they come back with it, now it's violence. If I tell you that's dead, it's dead, there's nothing else to talk about. If you come back again, we're going to go to fight because I've already pretty much warned you about even mentioning the situation to me. Charles goes over there, goes to the cell, says, hey, man, what's up? Dude's inside the cell doing something. I'm over towards where my homeboys are. I'm not at the cell. And whatever they said, it pissed the big dude off. Big dude punches him in his face. Boop. Charles backs out the cell, grabs his eye, walks over there and sits down at the table by himself. Got his back turned to control booth, just kind of... And you see the big-ass red mark underneath the side of his eye. He's just sitting there. Now you done got your shoes took. Now you done got punched in the face. And your cellmate's going to kick you out the cell, right? Charles is out there talking to his little homeboys a little while later, telling them the situation with his cellmate and how his cellmate's going to kick him out the cell, right? So they told him, you got to do something. You got to get your shoes back. You got to run with your cellmate. And these are other cornballs telling him this. All of them put together wouldn't fight nobody. And if they did, all of them put together would lose against the average man that had been in one fight, right? They're gassing Charles up. Charles said, you could tell, he looked like he wanted to cry to me. Like, I don't know what to do about my shoes. I've been punched in my face. This dude ain't gonna let me come in the cell because I done got punched in my face and I ain't got my shoes back. His little homeboys gas him up. Well, why, how you gonna let dude kick you out your cell? Say something to him or go get your shoes back, right? Charles like, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. He's not about to say nothing to his cellie. Even though he's agreeing, we all know. You're not about to go in there and say nothing to that grown-ass man that's going to fuck you up for running your mouth, right? So by now, Charles has told his cellie, look, I'm going to get my shoes back. Don't worry about it. His cellie ain't trying to hear it. His cellie, one way or another, is trying to get Charles moved out the cell. This dude's, you know, not, he will hurt Charles, but he's not trying to go the hole behind it. And Charles one of the type of guys that if you beat him up real bad in the cell, He's going to tell on you. I see the tall dude one evening. He comes in from playing basketball. By now, the shoes are just... They look like they've been in the prison 10 years. He rushes in. Runs up in the cell. Grabs his soap dish. Shampoo. Washcloth, towel, boxes, shirt. Comes out the cell. He's trotting down in the shower. Trying to get the shower before everybody else. In his shower shoes. Watch the whole thing play out. I look, I'm like, oh, he ain't got them damn shoes on. I look at Charles, Charles sitting at the table, and he's like, looking around, tall dude's door is open. Charles checks the booth, looks around at all the other dudes. There's a lot going on right now, because records just ended. So you got a lot of people coming in, trying to hurry to get their stuff and get in the showers. We only got four showers, right? Guys are right. Hey, let me get next on the shower. Hey, who got after you? 
Everybody's trying to get a shower. Charles gets up from the table, walks around the pod one time, passes dude's cell. Walks around the pod again, gets up on dude's cell and dips up in the cell. I see Charles come out. Charles got the sneakers underneath his shirt. He got them balled up under his shirt. He just went and stole his own sneakers, right? Goes back over to his cell. Tall dude gets out the shower, goes over to the cell, does his routine, sitting in the cell, got boxes on, putting lotion on his feet, lotion on his legs, lotion all over, just doing the routine you do when you get out of the shower, getting fresh, right? Notices the shoes are gone. A couple minutes later, I look over, I see the tall dude come out of the cell, got his state jeans on, the blue jeans on, and the boots, the state boots, the ones that actually fit his ass, and a white t-shirt. Beelines over to Charles' cell, right? You never know when what you got going on is going to get the next person in trouble. You'll think about what I'm about to say from what I said in the beginning of the story. He goes over to Charles' cell. Charles' cell is sitting on the bottom bunk. Charles will put the shoes in his box and it's on the top bunk. And the dude, tall dude just walks right in the cell. We don't see inside the cell. We just hear the commotion. In a matter of seconds, I hear all hell break loose. Do, 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 do. Rumbling. Straight rumbling. I'm talking about you hear that noise from when boots and sneakers skr, 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 are hitting that, that floor. You know that sound. It's a very distinct sound that when you hear it, you immediately look in that direction because you know somebody's fighting. Who thinking, hell yeah, Charles is in there fighting. Even if he gets beat up, he's in there fighting this dude over these sneakers, right? Big dude comes out, eyes all knotted up, still got his stay boots on. Side of his shirt's ripped, not bleeding, just a whole bunch of knots on his forehead, knots on his cheek, eyes all, you know, messed up like it should be. Walks on back over to his to his uh his cell. Next thing I know, I see shit starting to get thrown out the cell. Commissary coming out the door. Everything coming out the door. And I see them damn white shoes come out the door and go across the floor. And I see Charles walk out. Sully walks up behind him and told him. I told your dumb ass about loaning shit to people. And I told you you wasn't going to be no bitch in my cell. That man done ran up here and tried to disrespect where I live. And I had to handle your situation. Go tell the guards you want to check in. You can't live in here or I'll fuck you up. Charles gathered. He got his sheets and blankets off the bed. Laid them on the ground. Put all his stuff in the middle of it. Rolled it up. Tied it in a knot. Put it on his back. Walked to the front of the pod. Told the guards he feared for his life. And he rolled up out of there. His decided to be a nice guy and loaning somebody else something, loaning those dumbass new balances out to that dude, ended his celly up in the fighting. That's like if me and you are roommates and you got beef with somebody, if somebody comes through that front door looking for you, just based on the fact I live here, I'm gonna defend the house. It's the same rules in the penitentiary. Your cell, your hut, that is your house. Whether you like it or not, that is what the government has designed and designated for you to live in and sleep in, and you're going to share it with another man. And you don't let nobody come up in there and disrespect it. Even if it ain't got nothing to do with you, you can't let them disrespect that house. Because if they do, that's what you're going to be known for, and the next one's going to try you. Crazy, crazy thing. Now, after Charles' story, I hope you understand the severity and the possible outcome of what could happen from loaning something to somebody. Like I said, ain't no Boy Scouts in there, ain't no choir boys. You might have been one when you came in, but it's not gonna end that way. Most of the dudes in there are out for self. Now, when it comes to loaning things out, it doesn't just apply to property. For all my guys that have done time, my viewers that have done prison bids, jail bids, I'm sure each and every one of y'all got a story similar to what I'm about to tell or have seen something similar happen. Loaning things out can consist of pretty much anything you can think of. That also consists of trading items. Yes, trading items. One of the most common things to be traded is chow hall food. Mmm. There are certain things in the chow hall you are gonna like more than others. You're gonna have favorites. And I'll be the first to tell you, ain't none of it gonna be delicious. Ain't none of it gonna be like mama's cooking or grandma's food or your auntie or your wife's. 
None of it's going to taste like that. But after eating it day in and day out, month after month, year after year, you're going to figure out, hey, I actually kind of like that. Guys will swap items on their trays. Hey, you, look, man, I know it's chicken day. Chicken is a hard tray to come by to get an extra one. Some guys that are broke will sell that chicken for a couple items. Man, give me $2, I'll give you the chicken. You make sure he pays you before you go to the chow hall. He knows damn well he wants to buy a chicken before he goes over there. So the right way to approach the situation is to go to whoever you want, whoever you think will sell that chicken or that you know sells the chicken and be like, hey, I got these two honey buns for that piece of that piece of chicken. Okay, shit. I don't you know what I mean I don't even love, shit, I don't like chicken. Here you go. And you trade. What you don't do is get in the chow hall and somebody say, hey, let me get that piece of chicken. I'll give you two items when we get back to the pod. Now he owes you, and if you're not built like that, you just got beat out of your chicken. People also do things. Man, I love fried eggs, but I hate pancakes. And I tell you what, I'll give you my pancakes for your fried egg. So you get my two pancakes a day. Next time, you know, you, you give me the fried egg. Okay, bet. That works if you're. it's amongst homeboys or somebody you've seen do this with other dudes and not just do it with gangsters. But if you see a guy that does it with a little weak dude and he pays up, you might be okay in getting paid. Even then, you run a risk of that guy waking up on the wrong side of the bed one day or deciding today's going to be the day I'm going to be a piece of shit. I'm not paying this soft ass. I'm going to eat these eggs. We got one dude in general that loves the hot dog tree. Hot dog tray is like a chicken tray. It's highly sought after. Them two hot dogs on the tray, them two little malnourished ass, skinny ass Slim Jim hot dogs that come on that tray that are overly cooked. They're just, it's nothing, it's none of your favorites. It's like if you left two hot dogs on the grill for a week but never ever turned the grill on and they went out there and got them and they're purple, that's the equivalent of the hot dogs. This dude loves the hot dog tray. Now, he had a couple different dudes that he would buy the hot dogs from. The problem this go around is he ain't got no commissary. We ain't been to commissary in a while. So dudes are eating them hot dogs. Hey, man, you going to sell me two hot dogs? Hell no. Nah, I ain't got nothing in the box, nothing to eat in the cell. I'm going to die if I don't eat these two hot dogs. Breakfast is a long ways away. I need my two hot dogs. Dude goes up to another dude. These two black dudes. Hey, man, let me get the two hot dogs, and the next time... Yada yada comes around on the tray with something else I can't remember. I, oh, it was cake. Next time we get the cake with the frosting on it, I'll give you the cake. You gonna give me the cake with the icing? Yeah, look, give me the two hot dogs. Next time the cake comes around, I'm gonna give you the cake. Just so happens the following day we get our meal, we get the cake with the icing. I told you, we ain't got no commissary. Dude gets his tray, sits down. What he's supposed to do, he don't touch the cake. Don't bother the cake. Don't disturb the cake. Don't look at the cake. Don't talk to the cake. That man's gonna come over there, reach on his tray, and take the piece of cake. He don't want the cake if you touched it. He gets his tray, and rather than either walk over there and be like, here, man, grab your cake, anything like that, he goes and sits down. The first thing he does is pick the cake up, take a bite out of it, and sit it back on his tray. Before anything else, he bit the cake. He knew what he was doing. I said, dope fiend larceny. That's the shit I don't like. Dude goes over there to get the cake. He's like, God damn, homeboy. Excuse me, Lord. Use your name in vain. Damn, homeboy, you bit the cake. He was like, Oh, you thought you was gonna get today's cake? No, I meant after we go to the store. Like, what you mean after we go to the store? I didn't wait till after we went to the store and I gave you my hot dogs. You were hungry all night. I need that cake. Look, man, I'll double up. My bad. I didn't know it's it's a misunderstanding, right? I told you sometimes at Greensville, you would go three weeks before you would hit the store, right? A couple days later, goes around. Cake tray comes over, you know, we get our food, there's cake on the tray with the icing. Dude sits down, dude picks the cake up with his hands, walks over to give it to dude. Dude looks at him and goes, why the fuck you touch the cake, man? Why you got your dirty ass hands that you just ran all down that nasty ass rail that you been touching your dick with, that you scratch your ass with? Only cake, man. I'm tired of playing when you stop playing. You know you don't touch nobody. You don't touch nobody else's food in, in the real world. You definitely don't touch the next man's food in prison, right? He said, look, man, stop fucking playing games with me, man. I don't want that cake. Next time cake comes around, if we got any type of problems, man, I'm telling you, like, it is what it is. You already know what time it is. This is why you don't loan, don't borrow, keep your shit, let him keep his shit. Three, four days goes by, we've gone to commissary. 
everybody's eating, right? The dude that he owes the cake, they call, you know, chow. Everybody rolls out to go to chow. And the dude that is owed the cake is kind of laying back. He's kind of scraggling. He's going to go at the last minute. Well, I guess the other dude looks over and sees he don't get in line for chow. And is like, well, shit, he must not be coming. He must not be coming. You know what I mean? So I'm going to eat the cake. This dude's not coming over. I'm going to eat the cake. He's in one of the first dudes in the front of the line. And there was dope fiend larceny. I knew the guy was going to go over there. It's a good trade. He's going to go over there. But this guy was looking like, oh, yeah, he ain't in line. I'm going to eat this real quick. Sits down at the table, commences to eating the cake. We're all sitting at the table just talking, drinking our juice, eating our food. And I look over, and I see the dude come through the door, the last few guys, like four or five guys come through the door. He's walking through, and he's looking for the dude that owes him the cake. And he looks over, and he's sitting there. What does he see? Lo and behold, homeboy sitting there with a piece of cake. Taking big bites out of a good decent sized piece of cake. Y'all know in prison, sometimes you get that little ass piece of cake, you be like, come on man, throw a different piece of cake on my tray. It's a little ass piece of tray. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do with that little ass kid's piece of cake. If you get the right dude, they're gonna put it on there. Most time dudes are gonna be like, fuck you. You want a bigger piece of cake, pay me. Got the big piece of cake. Over there just chowing down. Black dude standing there looking at him, watching him eat the cake. I watch him. This guy's behind him, he goes, excuse me, excuse me. Turns around and starts going the opposite way back down the line, passing guys. Comes around, walks up on dude, and dude is going to put the last little piece of cake to his face, and he hits him. Boom! Knocks him off his stool. Puts him in the floor. Cleans the table of all the fucking food. Commences to whoop an old boy's ass. Old boy that dropped the little last piece of cake on the floor. Now the guards are involved. There's juice all over the floor. The two dudes are rumbling. Beans all over the floor, and you know, just like that, a piece of cake, a piece of cake. You've been beat up over a piece of cake, much less a prison piece of cake. Dude got his ass handed to him behind his cake. Both of them went to the hole. Dude never got his tray. The first dude never got to eat his meal, just most of the cake. They didn't end up coming back out together. Both of their release dates changed and now gonna go home later than you should because you done got a fighting charge right in front of the officers all over a piece of cake. You know the saying? Man, that's a piece of cake. Exactly what it was. It was a piece of cake to do when he whooped dude's ass. Don't be loaning nobody nothing. Don't borrow nothing. Don't trade nothing. You're gonna meet dudes in there that are gonna be stand-up guys, guys you can trust, guys you kick it with. And even then, you're gonna have to watch them sometimes. But you'll know when you can deal with somebody and when you can't. If you're iffy about it, don't do it. My advice to you is don't do it. If you're hungry, stay hungry. Don't be swapping, doing this and doing that, thinking shit's sweet, because it might end up being a piece of cake. So there you have it. A couple stories on why you don't loan, why you don't borrow, why you don't trade while incarcerated. All 100% facts. Leave people alone, and a lot of times they'll leave you alone. You heard the saying, don't start nothing, won't be nothing. On both of those stories I gave you today, that whole situation could have been avoided had they adjust went by the rules and not traded nothing off, not loaned nothing off. Take my advice. I know some of this may be entertaining, but there's a message to all of it. Some of the people watching this, unfortunately, are facing time and are going to go to prison. Some of the people watching this are going to go to jail. Some of the people watching this may not make it to see tomorrow. But if you do find yourself in that situation where you were incarcerated or locked up, God forbid, take my advice. Everything I tell y'all is true. I ain't never gonna lie to kick it to you. All my stories are true. My past is true. Who I am is true. I am the same Jay every day. Don't borrow nothing from nobody. Don't loan nothing from nobody. Even with store boxing, you can get a good hustle off that. But don't somebody pay, nobody don't pay you, you gotta go collect. If you're not a guy that's built for fighting, that's going to fight or that's willing to get down behind his, don't loan nothing, don't borrow nothing, don't trade nothing. But anyways, these jails, institutions, detention centers, these facilities are all just crazy worlds inside of this already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. Just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams. Let's live life. And to all my real ones, and there are some real ones watching, because y'all still watching me. And y'all know how we do. Salute.